welcome students good evening welcome to la excellence economy shorts this is dr ram babu who is going to present to you today the franklin templeton issue which is related to mutual funds to understand this concept you need to know what is a mutual fund how it works what are the risks it faces and how it tries to handle the risks and what are the circumstances that have led the to the closure of certain schemes by the franklin templeton these are the things which we are going to cover today so this discussion is under the scheme that is economy shorts under the program economy shorts let us make a certain understanding over here i will give you certain scenarios to keep the points directly in your mind please observe the scenarios carefully so to understand the mutual funds see this scenario Let's take I have some 50000 rupees and I am a teacher this 50000 rupees is my savings I want to invest it somewhere so that I can get returns as a teacher I want to invest them in very low risk funds I want my capital to be safeguarded first it shall not be eroded if I get a rupee over it very good for me but I don't want my capital to be eroded So in this context I was searching for various options before me one of the option is to invest in the stock exchanges or to invest in certain bonds in the money market in that scenario I do not have sufficient knowledge to deal with a gentleman has come to me he said that for the last 20 years I am working in this uh, financial sector i know what is good what is bad how the companies perform where to invest where not to invest you can safely depend upon me and i believed him because he is a specialist he has got mba in finance he has went to some good universities and he is into this particular game for the last 20 years as like i am into teaching as i know the intricacies of teaching this man knows the intricacies of financial investment i definitely believe him why not then i say to him i will give my investment keep my investment with you you invest this in proper places um, and give me the returns and you can take that in part of it for managing my investment and the person whom i am giving my funds he is a mutual fund manager so let's understand mutual fund multiple investors are there the money of these investors is pooled up and all the pooled up investment it is called as a mutual fund and this mutual fund is managed by a specialist who is called a mutual fund manager and this mutual fund manager he will make investment decisions and these investments are expected to give us returns and these returns will profit the investors this is how in a nutshell the mutual fund works A mutual fund is nothing but a pooled up investment managed by a specialist investor. Now, where he is making the investments, based on that, we can call it in two ways. One is uh, equity funds. The next are debt funds. What are these equity funds? Let's take my fund manager. He is investing the money in. stock exchanges in buying and selling the stocks of various companies then i call them as equity investments and if my fund manager he is buying certain bonds government bonds that like treasury bills or certain company bonds like commercial paper etc then these are called debt instruments you know which is more risky equity funds are more risky compared to debt funds so debt funds you get the interest on equity you get the dividends and also once you sell the shares you get uh, benefits on the rise of the price so these debt investments or debt funds are relatively safe now i want further safety so my fund manager says among the debt instruments i have scheme one scheme two scheme three scheme one is invested in the best companies Scheme two is invested in government bonds. Scheme three is invested in more returns. Funds are as companies which give more returns, which gives us the more returns, which can pay more interest. Which companies pay more interest, which is an urgent need of funds, pay more interest. So fund manager goes to them. I have thousand crores with me. 
I will give that fund to you, but what is the interest rate you are going to give me? 30%? Your company is uh, in risk. You urgently need funds. So give me 35. Now he cannot go and bargain that with Tata's and uh, Reliance. So they say that we already have sufficient funds. Don't worry, Baba. That's what they say. So more the risk you are taking, the scheme is taking, more the returns it will have. As an investor, I can choose the scheme. I want to sleep peacefully. I don't want any of my investment to be eroded. I don't want any risk. I will invest in government bonds. Even governments can go wrong. If you see Brazil, Venezuela, they're all their government bonds have become junk. But relatively, when compared to private companies, government bonds are stable. Tomorrow, Andhra government becomes bankrupt. What will happen to Amaravati bonds? They have become junk. But however, nor two possible extent, uh, governments try not to become bankrupt because that uh, undermines the sovereignty, trust of the people in the government. Okay, let's not go there further. So what I'm trying to say at the bottom line is this, the mutual funds creates different schemes based on the risk level and they can invest in uh, equities or they can invest in debts. Now. In these debt investments or debt funds, let's understand. Where they are investing? They are investing bonds. So when they invest in the bonds, they cannot do like this. Today I have invested money, tomorrow give my money back from the company. There will be some time period. That is what we call it as maturity period. And after the maturity, you get more money on the top of your investment. Whatever the more you are getting, that is called yield. On bonds, we get yields. Good. Hope you are clear till now. So, investors, where do they like to invest? In the funds that have lock-in period or without lock-in period. It means still two years you cannot redeem your money. Then what will happen? I will not buy that fund. So that's why to attract the investors, uh, normally mutual funds do not keep lock-in periods. But, when they are making investments, companies want minimum maturity period. So when the investor wants to withdraw the money from the fund, this is what we call the redemption. Redemption. Now, let's go to the scenario two. I think ICICI Bank many times faced this scenario. What is that? We have invested the money. All the depositors at a single go want their money back. There is a rumor which has come up that ICICI bank is about to be closed. Because of this, all the depositors panic and they want to get their money back. Then in such a situation, when all the depositors want their money back at a single go, can a bank pay that money? Because bank might have given that as a loan to many people. So when they give the loan to the people, it might be for 5 years, 10 years, something like that. All of a sudden, bank cannot go to them and ask, but please pay my money back. My depositors are asking it. I have to pay them back, please. Can they do that? Bank really simply can't do that. Then the situation is called bank run. Now, similarly, let us go with the mutual fund. Let all these investors want to redeem their money at a single go. But the money has been kept in certain bonds. And these bonds have certain lock-in period, 91 days, 182 days, 364 days. Like that lock-in period is there for these bonds. The mutual fund guy cannot go and ask to them, please give my money back. No. So in that case, this mutual fund has to pay back to its investors to maintain their confidence. This is what called the crisis of the mutual fund. In that circumstances, how the mutual fund has to act. So normally to face these situations, the mutual funds maintain something called cash buffers. What are these cash buffers? Let's take. In your banks, you have cash reserves. Out of 100 rupees, 80 rupees will be used for commercial activities. 20 rupees, they may keep it aside. Whenever the depositors want, when the demand for withdrawal of the deposits increase, these people try to keep that money aside. Similarly, in the case of the mutual funds, what do we have is the cash buffers. But here there is a critical thing. Banks wants to keep as low resorts as possible. Similarly, mutual funds also tries to keep the buffers as low as possible. Why? More reserves are being kept. Out of 100 rupees, if I keep 50 rupees as a buffer, then I have only 50 rupees to do the business. It means out of 10 rupees, 
I'm just using, I'm just 50%, 5 rupees. And on that even if I get 20% return, it is very less. Yes or no? So keeping the money idle or keeping the money available as a buffer. Right, what shall I do? So keeping the money idle or keeping the money into business. So in the normal circumstances when the money markets are growing, people do not like to keep the money idle. Okay, let's keep. One of the risks which they have is cash buffer. Next, how do they downplay the risk? They ladder their investments, stagger. Laddering means what? They do simply distribute these investments and returns on a time period. It means few funds are invested in 91 days bonds, few funds will be invested in 182 days, 364 days. Like that, they distribute this over a time period. So few are invested in short term, few are invested in long term. If they invest in long term, returns will be better. But they invest in short term funds so that whenever a risk comes up immediately the money is available to them. That's why by laddering, by staging or sequencing this money over a period of time, they try to keep their funds safe. Third is, when the distress has come, this money is also not sufficient. Then what is the option before that is assets a sale? Next, borrowing. They can go to the bank, pledge their fund, assets, and they can borrow the money. In these two circumstances, see a scenario three. Now, my fund is in difficulty. I have assets. But due to certain circumstances, my investors are no more confident about me. In this distress, I go to certain bigger uh, individual, high net worth individual. I'm going to sell these bonds. These are gold. They may be gold or not, but you are in distress. If they are worth of 100 rupees, give me for 50 rupees. You may ask that. Now borrowing, if I pledge 100 rupees worth of funds, probably he may give only 20 rupees to me. I might have pledged 100 rupees of bonds. He might have given only 20 rupees as a loan to me in bank. This is how the banks play with. So in that scenario, see the moral hazard over here. The people who are redeeming the money, you are selling the assets and you are trying to pay it off. And the people who wants to continue with you, who, has, who is trusting you, for you, they have been left with nothing. Because all the good assets, they have been bought, you are selling them and someone is buying them. And what you will be left with the fund? Junk assets. Let's take some XYZ company which don't have, which will stay or not, you will have that particular assets. Tata, Reliance, government bonds, probably someone bought out because they are well rated. But what about the others? These are junks. So you are left with the junk. It means the investors who have trusted in you, you are giving them the junk. Investors who do not trust you and want to redeem the money, you are pledging everything and uh, giving back their money. In this context, I'll give the analogy. A farmer is there. He went into debts. Now he wants to pay back to keep his uh, prestige or to keep his the trust. So he's selling off his land at whatever the cost he is getting. Very good land which gives gold. Then his wife has asked. So you are paying back to the money whom haven't trusted you and wanted their money back. Then what about the people who have trusted you, relatives who have trusted and given the money, and your children who gave you the money, what about them? This is what is the moral hazard. So in such a situation, the option before them is closing that fund or closing the scheme. Don't think that closing the scheme means they're saying that we don't pay you. No. Closing the scheme means freezing the scheme. So every fund will have someone called trustees. Along with the managers, there will be trustees. Who are these trustees for a company? There will be directors, board of directors. Like these trustees are meant to protect the investors, interests of the investors. If the trustees makes a decision, if this fund is kept open, it is not going to do good for anyone. Let us wait for the good days to come. Good days to come. So these trustees will make a decision on closure of that fund. So once they make, no money will come within to the fund, no more investments are accepted and no money will go out of the fund. It means no asset sale will be allowed. 
that's what is called no redemption is allowed that's what is called closure of the fund the franklin templeton exactly did the same because of liquidity crisis what are the things why the liquidity crisis has come up one is because of covid 19 the investors also need the money let's take i have got law excellence money with me i have invested in a mutual fund for greater returns but due to COVID-19, there is lockdown and I have no returns. No money is flowing in. But I have to pay a fixed salaries of 60 lakh rupees per month. We have a big research team. So 60 lakh rupees, where shall I get that? So whatever the funds, wherever I have invested, I have to redeem them. Because I can't sell the land now. So I have invested to redeem them whenever I want those money. So I will normally then... Many of the people will be just like me. They all redeem the money. Let's take some individual might have invested. Now he has to run his house. He may redeem the money. So because of the COVID-19, there are exceptional circumstances. In these conditions, maintaining the trust of our investors has become a difficulty. This is what the Franklin Templeton said in their letter to investors. So once it has been frozen, when the good times come back, so whatever the returns they get, they will share the returns across various investors on that day. And what the investors has to do, fingers crossed, wait. You want to be massacred today or you want to save for today and take the returns tomorrow. Because you are not allowed to be massacred today. Please wait. Hold your breath. This is what Franklin Templeton is saying. This is what is the story of Franklin Templeton. Hope you have understood. Now. What the RBI did? So there is a fourth option that is borrowing. Give funds to mutual funds or give money to mutual funds liberally. That is what is the RBI's advice to the banks. Will the banks follow that? Maybe or may not. And if the banks do not follow it, that's a crisis. So if the equity funds are there, if they are selling out the equities, to pay back to the investors. What will happen? There is no lock-in period for equities. They sell it across. When they sell it across to pay back uh, to the investors, obviously the prices of the companies, market capitalization of the companies will collapse. Wealth of the companies will collapse. So reliance value may be few lakh crores today, but tomorrow it may become few thousand crores. So economy will collapse. Trust of the people in capital markets, money markets will collapse. So that's why RBI understood the danger. To, so that it wants to pump in the money to ensure the liquidity in the mutual funds now. But banks already are in uh, hanging with NPAs. The NPAs are huge. If tomorrow if these mutual funds bankrupt, banks, whatever the loans they give, they go. They hang in here. So that's why banks are not ready to give. So that is where, where the future lies for the capital markets is the big question before us. Hope you understand this. With new economy shots, I will come next week. Thank you very much. Have a great day. All the best.